Hello and welcome to Tripoli 454 VLSI 1 Laboratory Final Project Presentation of Group 3. Our task in this project was to implement a configurable logic block using the CMOS logic family. At first, I would like to thank our honorable course teachers for guiding us through this project and letting us learn to think from a designer's perspective. I would also like to thank our team members who actively contributed in making this project a success. Here is the outline of our project. Now let's discuss about the background. Field programmable gate array or FPGAs are versatile devices that can implement any logic functions parallelly. An FPGA chip consists of thousands of unit cells known as the configurable logic blocks or CLBs. These are the fundamental units of an FPGA chip that can be programmed externally. Our group has been tasked with the implementation of a CLB unit with three inputs and a one output, and the device has to be constructed using the CMOS logic family. We propose a design consisting of a 3-1 lookup table with an 8-bit SRAM, an 8-to-1 multiplexer, a positive edge triggered flip-flop, and a 2-to-1 multiplexer on the output stage. For the 2-to-1 marks, we followed an 8 transistor inverted output design. And for the 8 to 1 mask, we followed the three stage cascade structure of the 2 to 1 multiplexer. The final output of the CLB block, although is a non inverted one. The SRAM is slightly modified version of the standard 60 design, such that it does not require any pre charge or reading circuits. So instead, we use the first transistors here. Because of the requirement of the following CMOS logic family, we decided to use the NAND gates implementation of the flip-flop. With this, we conclude our design proposal. Now let's move on to our schematic. Now we take a look at the schematics designed using cadence. Here is the overall symbol and internal structure for the CLB device. The bottom row includes some additional inverters required for some logic operation. This is the base design for 2 to 1 multiplexer. For 8 to 1 multiplexer designed with 2 to 1 multiplexer blocks, D flip flop, some additional 2 input and 3 input NAND gates used inside the flip flop block, basic inverter. 8 bit SRAM, and this is the unit cell of the SRAM block using six transistors. Now we take a look at the final layout design of our CLB unit. In the layout, utmost care was taken in an attempt to minimize the circuit area. The final layout uses up to metal three layers for the block interconnects, and it is housed inside an area of 11.5 micrometer height and 5.9 micrometer width. Here is the layout of SRAM cell unit cell for one bit. The layout of D flip flop where all the PMOS and NMOS were housed only in two separate structures where it helped reducing the area at the cost of having to use additional metal layers. Each of the components of CLB was tested using separate circuits prior to combining into a single design. Here we can see the sequential nature of the flip-flop block. In the multiplexer test circuit, we can see how two input channels are passed onto the output depending on the select pins. And in the case of the 8 to 1 multiplexer test circuit, we can see how inputs having different frequencies are passed onto the output channel without interfering with each other. In the SRAM cell test circuit, we see that the cell is able to hold the data that was loaded while load pin was high. After all the components are individually tested, the final CLB design had to be tested too. In the case of the CLB test circuit, the data input pins to the LUT are connected to VDD or ground, depending on the requirements of the truth table. Here, the load pin is first used to load values into the LUT and the mode pin 
determines the operation mode of the CLB device. In this graph, we can see that the CLB output follows the input instantly while in the combinatorial mode. After switching over to the sequential mode, we can see that the output now toggles only at the moment of a positive edge of the clock. By this, we can conclude that the CLB is working as desired. Now it's time to take a look at the performance metrics of our CLB design. This table contains a summary of the minimum period required by the design for proper operation. First, we measure the flip-flop setup time. Keeping the D input unchanged, we delay the positive edge of the clock signal. The minimum delay time that allows the output to follow the input is taken as the best setup time, which in our case is 11 picoseconds. The total comp combinatorial delay is slightly complicated. All the state transitions where output toggles were taken into account for delay measurement. All the inputs were simultaneously changed for a state transition and the time required for output transition is taken as the delay for that case. By filling up the chart, worst case delay was found. Finally, the total minimum required period was calculated using this given formula. As we can see, when we go over the critical frequency of our CLB, the output becomes corrupted. After finding the maximum operating frequency, the energy requirements of the circuit were measured and compiled in this summary table. The active energy of the circuit is the average energy of all the state transitions in the circuit. These values are shown in this table here. From the graph, we can see that the current spike is occurring during a state transition and the corresponding energy loss is calculated by integrating this value with respect to time. These values are not taken at the maximum operating frequency as in that case, it's difficult to find the difference between stable and transitioning voltage values. The leakage energy is measured by operating the circuit at the maximum frequency and keeping the inputs unchanged. For all these states, the energy losses are calculated and the leakage for one cycle is measured. Finally, the loading energy is found by measuring currents at the input channels while the load signal is kept high. We have implemented our logic block using NAND gates to compare its energy and frequency characteristics with the CLB implementation of the same logic. The layout area of our final design is 67.85 square micrometers and the figure of merit of the circuit is found as the product of average energy, layout area and the inverse of maximum frequency, which in our case is valued at 3.34 into 10 inverse 35. With this, we have reached the end of our presentation. Despite having some limitations in the design as mentioned here, it can be concluded that it was a successful design of a CLB block using 45 nanometer CMOS technology. Thank you very much for your patience. Please feel free to ask any questions.